Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net. Now, I know it's been a while since my last video tutorial, but I'm glad to be back and I think we have a pretty good one for you. What we're gonna be creating is a set extension. So what exactly is a set extension? Well, sometimes you have a movie or a commercial you're working on and you need to have a background or an establishing shot of, say, Canada. Now, nobody really wants to go to Canada or it's expensive to film in Canada, so instead, you take a picture of Canada and you put it into the background thereby making it seem like your actors are actually in Canada. So that's one example. Now another example is say you need the background to be a place that doesn't actually exist. So that's when you have your art department put together this great matte painting. You put it up there and it looks amazing. So here are some different ideas of what you may want to use a set extension for. Now, we're going to take a look at actually executing a set extension in After Effects. Oh, and by the way, Canadians, I'm just kidding around. I love you guys. I just, uh, you know what? You know what it is? I figured you guys are the only ones who'd be able to take that joke. Nobody else would have. Oh, crap. Now I'm offending everyone else. No. It, crap. Okay, back to the tutorial. What we're gonna do is create this effect. So let's check it out. Okay, so that's Sam Loya just uh, traveling up the road here and making a stop at these deserted castles. Now, here is my favorite part showing you the before and after. So here's the after, here is the before. So basically we just added in a few of these castles, pretty straightforward. Now this location is actually pretty close to where I live and so me and Sam we hiked up there and uh, it's kind of fenced off and we sort of made our way in through an uh, opening and uh, we started filming and then this guy rolled up on a motorcycle and he was a security guard and he basically said hey what are you guys doing here and uh, we're just like nothing you know we're just uh, filming for a high school project. <laughs> and. Uh, he basically thought we were dumping trash on the land. And come to find out, this land is actually all owned by, what is it, Anheuser-Busch, the company who makes uh, a fine beverage called Budweiser. And uh, it was pretty interesting. Apparently they own all this land and they have those big horses with like the hairy feet. I don't know what they're called, but those things. And this is where they, uh, this is where they hang out. So, uh, okay, let's go ahead and get started. What I have is a composition with our raw footage in it. And what we're gonna do is motion track it. Now, we're gonna do something a little different than we normally do. I'm gonna create a new null object. And then I'm gonna create another new null object. And I'm gonna rename the first one first and the second one second. What we're gonna do is motion track this footage in two locations, apply the first half of the footage tracking to the first null, apply the second half of the footage tracking to the second null. Let's go ahead and start doing that now. So I'm gonna double click on the footage and that opens up the footage in the layer footage viewer. And what we're gonna do is bring up the tracker controls we are gonna make some space and we're gonna click track motion. Track point one, we're gonna click on rotation. That brings up track point number two. Now what we wanna do is uh, move these track points to a good location. Here's a nice good contrasted point. I'll just, uh, and track point number two, we will use this leaf or discarded piece of garbage. Um, you know, I think actually we want to make this point a little further away from this other point. So I'll actually stick it on these three little rocks. Maybe. Okay, so here's our two track points. We are gonna analyze forward. So make sure you're at the front of the uh, footage. So analyze forward. Uh, 
Now we're getting close to having one of the points go out of the frame, so we need to watch that. Okay, right here we're about to lose our track point. So we'll go ahead and stop right there. What I'm going to do is click on Edit Target. This window comes up. Set the layer to First Null. And then I'm going to choose OK. And then we're going to click Apply. And that motion tracking data is now going to apply itself to that first null object. So, first null object, let's see, we'll shut off the second one. First null object you can see is stuck on that footage, and the track looks pretty good. Now, what we need to do is motion track the second half of the footage. So, I'm going to select the first null, hit the letter U. That brings up our keyframes. What we want to do is move the CTI, current time indicator, to the last keyframe of the first half tracking. And then we'll double click on the footage and we can see our other track points here. We want to use another set of tracking points. So I'm going to click track motion. That creates another track point and then we'll click rotation which will allow us to track the rotation as well. So we'll move the first point out to the left and this point maybe to this little dark spot and the track point number one up to this house make it a little bigger and okay so those look pretty good and remember you want to be lined up with the last keyframe of the first half of tracking. And then we'll click Analyze Forward. And make sure the uh, tracks stay, uh, stay on pretty well. And be careful not to use points that you know overlap with your character or anything like that. Okay, track looks pretty good. Edit Target. Make sure we have the second null selected. And we'll choose OK. And Apply. X and Y, OK. So now back to the first comp. We now have our two null objects. And if we bring up the keyframes, we can see something pretty interesting here. Now what we want to do is link the tracking data together. This way we can parent our background to one of the null objects and it will reposition itself based on both trackers. So to do this, what we want to do is take the parent of the first track and parent it to the second track. Okay, So think about what's going on here. Our first tracker, so I'm going to change the color here to uh, blue. Our first blue tracker is uh, on the ground right here and we watch it. Now, it stops tracking at this point, no more data. Well, tracker number two, our red tracker, starts tracking at that same time. So, at the point where they cross or they overlap, second tracker picks up the parent. So, the first tracker is now connected to the second tracker. So, when I scrub through this, you'll see that the blue tracker still stays connected to the footage. So if I shut off the second tracker and watch it all the way through, you'll see that the first tracker stays connected to the footage even though the track points don't necessarily stay on the frame. So this is a really good way to link trackers together that say uh, go off the frame. Say you're doing a sky replacement of a really wide or really long panning shot and your track points are in the frame and then they go out of the frame and then in the frame and then out of the frame. This will allow you to link multiple trackers together into one fluid null object. So that should uh, sink in there and uh, you're going to be a happy camper. So, okay, now we have our super null object in place. So now we need to put our background in. So what I did is I went to, you know, nearly the last frame here on the raw footage. And uh, what I did is I simply I clicked composition save frame as file and I saved a single frame as a Photoshop file 
and rendered it out. And then I opened it into Photoshop, just like this. And what I did is did a little matte painting. And I took this picture of this castle and uh, cut it out. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get too into a Photoshop tutorial, but basically, here's our picture. We scale it down to fit into our frame. And we can choose color range and uh, get rid of uh, some of the background here. If you hold down shift, you can like click with the color range. And that looks good. Hit OK. And delete. So that's how we get rid of the background. Got the eraser tool. You know, just erase some of the excess stuff here. And then we take the, uh, I don't know, the stamp tool. I don't do Photoshop tutorials, so uh, you're just going to have to uh, bear with me. And uh, basically stamped in the grass to extend it because, uh, you know, we, it's not a, not a lot of grass in the original shot. Right, so we extend the grass out. And then that allows us to take the eraser tool again and make a really large erase brush that we can use essentially to soften the edge of uh, you know the grass so that it blends better with our background plate. Now, the good thing about working in Photoshop is that you can uh, you know work with good paint tools. You know you can do a lot of this in After Effects, but it's a pain in the butt. So you get it in here, and then we'll do some color correction on it, hue and saturation. Uh, I don't know. Match the uh, color. something like that, and position it, draw on some more stuff, all that good stuff. So here's the basic basic gist. Then we duplicate it, put it in the background, scale it down, and then add a layer style, double click, and uh, click color overlay. And we're going to color overlay with blue. So just uh, pick that blue color on the mountains there and then we bring the opacity of it down a little bit and that way it sort of looks like it's uh, off in the distance like it gets further away and uh, then I choose OK and you know you can make a few more of these make one smaller now this is a pretty lousy Photoshop tutorial I'm just sort of assuming we all sort of know how to use Photoshop so anyway there's our, uh, our little things. And then I went in with the, uh, whatever you call this tool. <laughs> I'm losing it here, guys. And uh, the stamp tool. And sort of changed the holes around on one to the other. Just so it looked a little bit different on first glance. And so you could, you know, move the hole to another location. And then erase the other one. And so you kind of create the illusion that they're uh, they're different if you change them enough. Okay, so once you have them all uh, all together, what I did is I just uh, put them into a layer set, duplicated the layer set, uh, let's see, uh, duplicate group, and then control E, or if you go to uh, merge group, and that way it sort of makes a flattened image out of this and that way you can open it up in After Effects and you don't have to worry about the layer styles coming through if you're not using CS3 so anyway that's my basic uh, matte painting tutorial okay we're back in After Effects and now we can go back to normal tutorial speed and what I'm gonna do is import that Photoshop file and when I open it up I get the Photoshop import dialog and we can do footage or a composition. And we're going to select composition and OK. Now if we double click on the comp, we have our Photoshop file that we created. And we'll just take just the layer. We'll copy it and paste it over top the frame in which we exported. In this case we exported frame 146. 
Now, as you can see, the shot does not stay connected to our footage. So what we need to do is at that point in time, take the parent whip for our set extension and connect it to the first track point. And this is the track point that runs through the entire shot. So now, if everything goes to plan, you can see that our set extension has now applied itself and we're looking pretty good here. Now, it goes a little off of the frame here and what we can do, just move it over a little bit. I shouldn't make uh, that big of a difference. All right, this is looking pretty good and we wanna now maybe add some different clouds so I have this picture of some clouds that we'll just drag out. And uh, it's just a high res picture. And uh, let's see, lower the opacity. I'm just gonna position this maybe about where I'd like it to be. And then put it underneath our matte painting. And then maybe bring the opacity up just a little bit. And then, remember it's not connected either. So we'll parent it to the first null object. And now it's connected. Now we have a couple of problems, as you may have seen in the past, with our sky element. And so what we're going to do is select the layer. And we're going to come up to the rectangular mask tool. And we're going to draw a mask around the clouds. And then if you hit M, brings up the mask and we'll set it to subtract and then we hit MM twice that brings up all the mask properties and we want to turn the feathering up for this mask so it blends with the you know with the background a little bit better so we'll just kind of turn this up that looks uh, that looks pretty good and then again, we want to take another mask, rectangular mask, and just draw one across the bottom. Hit MM and set the second mask to subtract and turn the feathering up as well. And this way it sort of blends with the background a little bit nicer. Not a lot of room here for 720p footage. Now, there's a couple things I want to talk about with this particular shot. And that is, you can see we pan up from the ground. And you'll notice that the shot is a little bit shaky. And it's purposely shaky so that you have a more realistic feel. Because when you add CG elements, you know, if it's a perfect linear pan that you do in the computer, it looks a little fake. So having a little bit of shake adds to the effect and it's also important that the cameraman or myself in this case stands in one spot and simply pans the camera around and that way the motion tracking will all work properly. Another thing that's important about this composition is that he's in the foreground. These elements are in the background. Now because we can see he's a person, you know for the most part, we can tell how big he is. Now comparatively things in the background and things off in the distance have their own size as well. And relative to the person in the foreground, we can distinguish how large those elements actually are. So in this case, these look like huge castles. Not that castles wouldn't be huge, but um, that's important when you're doing a composition is to kind of think about those type of things. You know, you want to try to balance it out, you know, think about the rule of thirds. The other thing is to be careful with your shot. So in this case, it works perfectly for adding in this extension because it doesn't interfere with our character. Now, if this element were to be behind him, we may have to do some roto work or maybe we want to have a green screen on the set that we could use to kind of pull him out. Um, but the idea with set extensions is to have a real set. So whether it's you know a small room that you make look larger or you know, this big open area, you want to have something real that the character is on. And that way, when you add in CG elements, the audience believes it a lot more because, you know, so much of it looks realistic. So it's part of sort of selling it. You know, you want to mix your CG in with your uh, 
live action stuff as well. So, all right, let's uh, let's get on to maybe some color correction. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, and this is uh, classic stuff. We're going to do effect color correction curves, and uh, no space to work with, but that's okay. And we're going to just bring the darkness down or the uh, gamma down there. And then we'll take the elliptical mask tool, double click, adds a nice mask. We'll uh, hit, hit MM and we'll change the mask to subtract, feather it up a bunch. So there we have a nice vignette around our shot. So far, so good. Then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. Now, here's an interesting technique that I want to show you. Um, and that is to add tracked color correction. So what I'm going to do is apply that same curves adjustment to this. I'm going to copy it from this adjustment layer and paste it onto this adjustment layer. Now if I shut off the first one, we have this one adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is scale it up. And it won't make a difference except that if it moves around, it will uh, stay uh, affecting the layer like you see. And then I'm going to take the rectangle mask tool and we'll just kind of cut it in half. And make sure you make it extra large like that. And then I'm going to hit MM and we'll feather it out a bunch. And then what I'm going to do is kind of go forward to maybe about right here. And we'll feather this up even more. And what we're kind of creating is this gradient on the floor. And we'll turn the uh, opacity down just a little bit. So basically we've created this adjustment layer with a gradient and we want it to just affect the bottom of the frame of this particular shot. So what I'm going to do is instead of leaving it there and letting it kind of add itself to the whole shot, I'm going to put it about here and I'm going to parent it to the first null, which will make it leave the frame when it gets out of the shot. So this way we have, you know, kind of this gradient color correction that is just kind of temporary so that the shot doesn't look all uh, washed out, you know. Not too bad. Okay, so I actually want to bring this up a little bit. Now another thing I'm going to do is create another adjustment layer. And we're going to use the same principles as the bottom layer, except we're going to make a golden layer for the uh, sky. So we'll scale up the adjustment layer, add the color correction photo filter, and we'll set it to a custom color and just make it kind of an orange color. And then we'll turn it up, you know, to your taste there. And that colors the whole thing kind of orange and doesn't look too good. So we're going to take the rectangle mask tool and cut it in half. Let's see. Cut it in half and then hit MM and feather the mask. So now we've created sort of this gel. Um, and I don't mean like hair gel, but like a, a film gel that just kind of adds a gradient to the sky. Now, we don't want this to be up the whole time. So we'll parent it to our first null. So parent to the first null. So now you can see that that layer stays connected to the footage. And when the shot goes up, it goes out of the frame. So that looks pretty good now. Uh, let's see here. Let's take this adjustment layer on our floor and let's uh, let's scale it up a little bit so that it covers the whole frame. Now, we need to add an overall color correction. Well, we don't need to, but we will. And to do that, what we'll do is uh, create a new adjustment layer again. Come over to the effects and presets. We're going to type in green easy. And here we have our great Film Magic Pro presets. We'll take Green Easy, apply to our adjustment layer. And now we've created this nice cinematic look. Now I'm going to turn our other adjustment layer back on and maybe bring the opacity of it to 75. 
So this is the uh, you know the uh, vignette. This layer is the uh, sand color correction. This one is the uh, sky photo filter, and this one is our film magic pro. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, another thing we can do is sort of animate the clouds. So here is our uh, clouds layer. And what I can do is hit P, bring up the position, and keyframe the position early on in the comp, and then move forward to the end, and then just kind of move it over a little bit. So I know clouds do a lot more than just uh, move, but Sometimes a little bit of an illusion, F9 on this keyframe, so that, that way you don't see it beginning to move. But if you kind of scrub through it fast, you can see that the uh, clouds are moving, you know. Oh, one other thing. If you don't have Photoshop, that's okay. What you want to do is go into Microsoft Paint. And you can just uh, use some of the uh, paint tools here and create your matte painting. And uh, it's uh, it's got some pretty advanced stuff like the uh, paint bucket here. We can do sort of shading on the buildings, and uh, that uh, that always looks nice. And uh, let's do some counter shading on top here. And I really like those uh, you know those rat holes in the uh, original one, but you know you can't always have the uh, high quality stuff that you want to go with, so you just kind of have to compromise. And, um, and I think we can copy this and paste it. So that's a, let's see, pretty nice feature. Look at us go here, man. We are, we are doing it. So we'll copy this one more time. Let's see, copy, paste, and uh, we'll put this one out into the background. So remember the rule of thirds, you wanna kinda keep it balanced and uh, okay. That looks really nice, and we're gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, back in After Effects, I have my great matte painting here, and what we're gonna do is just shut off this, uh, this one layer, and uh, we'll take that and drag it out to the comp. Now, we need to get rid of the white, so we'll choose Effect King, let's see, Luma Key, and we'll key out the brighter. And uh, I'll turn the threshold up, Okay, so we'll kind of position this a little bit. Very nice. And then remember, we need to parent this to the first null. Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks really good. So as you can see, uh, you know, you don't have to have an expensive program like Photoshop to do great set extensions like you see here. Um, Okay, now for the lucky ones out there who have Photoshop, we'll go ahead and use that. Um, you can see, uh, you know, we're uh, we're in business with this uh, great effect. Now, one other thing I didn't tell you about is this shot is actually Sam's audition tape for the movie 300. He was actually auditioning to be the Hunchback, and unfortunately there were some scheduling conflicts with uh, my production company and Frank Marshall and frankly I said look I have him in a contract and if you want him to be in this movie I need 80 million dollars and you know they actually decided to go in another direction um, I think mainly though they wanted a character to play a hunchback they didn't actually want a real hunchback I'm just kidding, Sam. I know you watch these things. I love you, man. No hard feelings, all right? Okay, guys, I've wasted enough of your time. My name is Andrew Kramer, and uh, thanks for watching. Of course, come check out videocopilot.net. We got a blog. We have great products, great DVDs. Check them out. Buy them. You will not be disappointed, um, unlike you may have been with this tutorial. I mean, the tutorials that you buy and the products you buy, they're actually high quality, you know, compared to this stuff. All right, that's all I got for now. See you guys. Oh, wait, one of, just kidding.